Welcome to FX Options University, recorded live at the International Securities Exchange, the world's largest equity options exchange. Join the industry's top trading professionals as they provide insight and strategies for trading in the currency markets using FX options. FX options are a low-risk alternative to hedging currency moves in any market condition. So it's extremely important that that, that correlation is out there, um, at least at some, at some cursory level, that, that you want to be aware of that, okay? And be aware of what's uh, of that correlation. Be aware of, 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 you know, an easier money policy, um, a risk appetite um, sentiment that's pushed in the market. Because as a trader, Steve, at, a, at the most basic level, we want to be on the side of sentiment. Now, how you define sentiment or what time frame you define sentiment is, is, is a whole other conversation and topic. But ultimately, if sentiment is bullish in the markets, we want to be on the long side. And if sentiment is bearish in the markets, we want to be on the short side. So as a trader, first really identify with where is sentiment in the market that you're trading, okay? And if sentiment is more risk, is, is more risk appetite, it's probably going to be a lower volatility environment. And that's what you want to be keeping in mind as you, as you trade these ICE options. Now, as you begin to find ways and you begin to understand sentiment and play that, there may be, there's better ways to maybe put on those positions. But initially... When it comes to going long, you maybe buy some calls. When it comes to short, you buy some puts. You've defined your risk. When maybe you want to neutralize some of your Greeks, okay, um, you may want to put on some put or call spreads. When maybe you want to, um, you know, say, you know what, I think the markets are going higher, but I think the tech is going to lead the rally like it has, and the S&P and the banks are going to lag behind. Well, in that case, now you look maybe putting on a, uh, a long QQQ, a short spider trade, okay, and you, and, and, and you take on more of a market neutral approach. A lot of it, it really starts with yourself as a person. Like, what are you, how risk averse are you? What kind of appetite do you have? What's your swing for drawdown? This all comes in your trading plan. And so if a person wants to learn more about that, you know, I put on a few courses um, a year, but I definitely mentor and work with traders. I really want to, you know, I, I like working with traders that want to go to the next level, though. So but in, in, in terms of if you just want to get started, I have some other suggestions as well. Again, send me an email, and I can definitely guide you in the right direction, whether it be with which books you want to read or, or which class you want to go to. There's a lot of good stuff out there just for free. I mean, just these ISC educational webinars, you know, go through the archives. See some of my past stuff that I've talked about. Um, and, and I promise, when you start to hear me on a regular basis, I actually don't talk so fast. Yeah. Hey, John, I have one other question, then I want all the other attendees, all the attendees to uh, type all the questions, and then, of course, you handle those. Uh, over the last, let's say, two years, we've seen trends in the currency market that were amazing. Uh, first, we saw the dollar rally for a, almost a year, and then we saw the dollar sell off for, well, a little under you know, a year, I guess. Um, and then we saw, I don't know if it's a game changer. In fact, that's, what I'm, that's my question is, December was the first month that the dollar rallied for, I guess, around a year or so. Uh, what would make you change your mind that the, the dollar is going to strengthen, and therefore, what would you do in the other asset classes? I'd watch the Fed fund futures and get a sense of where the Fed's going to go because, you know, currencies move on, on carrying interest rate differentials, not on trade balance deficits and whatnot, and, and there's just ridiculous quantitative data to, to corroborate that. So <laughs> right now, right now, and especially in this environment, in, in, in this, you know, if the Fed begins to back off and Fed funds begin to show that maybe we're not going to get quite the rate hikes we are um, and that the Fed, you know, is not going to play catch-up with the ECB, then, then I would – you know, change that opinion. But I think that, that if the economic data, um, you know, with the, with the upside surprise we had an NFP back in December, if we get a second number that comes out with that, I think that we can get a second leg down again. Um, still enough for me to be short, for me to be short volatility. I'm still comfortable with that position. Um, but, but overall, though, I think that that can um, ultimately unhinge things. And I think that the volatility on the S&P will, will play a lot, will more than offset whatever short vega I have on, on the currencies. But, but net, net, to answer your question simply, succinctly, which I didn't answer succinctly, but um, if the Fed funds futures um, begin to back off and if we begin to get maybe those euro dollars in two years back near, uh, back near highs again, that to me is more indicative that, that maybe the Fed isn't going to take, isn't going to tighten as much as the market's pricing in right now. Well put, thanks. Uh, what? Why don't you take, John, the, uh, some of the questions. I see Andrew has a couple questions for you. And everybody else, please type the questions in. John, you know, really knows his stuff. So uh, take advantage of John being here. Please. Uh, okay. John, I see. Questions. It looks like Andrew's asking a couple of questions here. And maybe, Steve, you can help me to make sure that I'm getting these correctly. But um, Andrew mentioned um, 
We're gonna we're gonna mention uh, the okay. Is now a good time to start a hedge fund? Um, Andrew, I'll discuss the timing behind starting a hedge fund and the costs. I go over that during the webinar. Um, in general, it depends on the kind of assets you have. But as a rule of thumb, um, there's certain provisions out there um, and exemptions you can have if, you, if, if you're a small size. I'll discuss those and say and, and why you may want to be a fund and why you won't want to be a fund. But uh, in general, if you, if you can make money, it's always a good time to be a professional trader. Um, the second rule, in terms of the performance rule, i.e., if you are an unknown but run an incubated fund and get good results, will the money come to you? Um, I have some ideas about that as well. In many cases, the answer is no. If, you run a, if, if you're small... And you, run a, and you run a fund, will the money come to you? Probably not. There's a ton of funds out there. There's a ton of managers that have good track records but can't raise a dime because they're either too small, they uh, don't have the infrastructure, they don't have the pedigree, the strategy they have is, is too new or too dynamic. And, and, and a lot of the, unfortunately, what's taken place over the last couple of years is that the big hedge funds that survived got bigger, even though they're not necessarily better, simply because more of a CYA function that, uh, that people invest, you know, well, they have these provisions, and, and based on what take, you, you would think that like money would find its way to better managers after what happened, but it's not necessarily the case. It found, it found its way to bigger managers. Um, and the workshop is not listed as an event on osoctrading.com. That will be corrected, but again, just send an email and, um, and, and, and sign up. You can sign up for membership. I'll be updating that. I'm also on Twitter um, as well. Um, and just, you can follow me there from my website. But just send an email to info at osoctrading.com. And, uh, and and all the all the info will, will come across from there. So that's um, that's the. Uh, let me go ahead and put that back that slide back up. It's again info at osoctrading.com from there. Any other questions? Hey John, could you just go back to that uh, Australian dollar U.S. dollar and chart? Let's take a look at that one more time. If uh, sure. I, I'm just very interested because that seems like a very good proxy for risk appetite here in the currency markets. Oh yeah. Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. That, that was the last slide there. Bang, bang, oh, bang, 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 bang. There you go. Okay. That one there. Yeah. That, one there. that that's the spot market right there. That's the, um, AUD USD on, on the CQG chart that I use. And so, and what, it's very interesting though, John. Don't you think? I mean, it's such a bull trend now. I guess since what February or March, and then yeah. it rolled over for almost the first time. Although it did roll a little bit in June and then rallied back. Um, right. Sort of a key key area here, no? Very key area, um, and and something that you know. Again, I think that that based on on what's gone out there, you know, I, I, I it won't surprise me if this bad boy consolidates or, or takes another leg lower. I'd be really hard pressed outside of some really bad economic data. If we if we get bad economic data, we're going to new highs on the Aussie on on this Friday. It's done and done. Okay, and so I'm aware of that, and, and like. Living in Las Vegas and, and being a trader for as long as I have and being in the Marine Corps, you better know your outs, okay? You better understand what can go wrong. In fact, it's better to understand what can go wrong as opposed to what can go right, all right? So you, you can manage that and, and, and account for that. And so for me, if all of a sudden NFP disappoints, okay, then we, uh, then we you know, then, then, then go from there. Interesting. It's very interesting. Thank you for participating in this week's session. Please join us again next week. Get trading ideas, exchange rates, webinars, news, and commentary. Visit www.fxoptions.com. ISE FX Options can be easily traded through all options-enabled brokerage accounts. These exchange-listed securities are cash-settled in U.S. dollars and have a European-style exercise.